UAP or airborne objects that when encounter cannot be immediately identified. With regard to the importance of transparency, the department is fully committed to the principle of openness and accountability to the American people. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots in the west. Oh my gosh, dude. U.S. Navy personnel recorded what appears to be triangles, some flashing. The video was taken through night vision goggles with a single lens reflex camera. Well, I, was, I mean, it's a pretty high profile incident. Uh, I, I don't claim to be an expert. You're, you're the guys investigating it. I mean, who else is doing it? There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. This is February 17th, 2024. Uh, before I begin the show, as I always do, this is dedicated to those who have been ridiculed, dragged through the mud, and made fun of from the media for the last 76 plus years. Um, I've got uh, 14 photos to show you for the first segment, and I hope you uh, can get through my. Uh, I'm not an Egypt, Egyptologist or an archaeologist, but I try my best at trying to convey the message for you to understand my points. So let's go to the first uh, photo. And what you're seeing here is you're seeing the great uh, pyramids of Giza, the three uh, most famous uh, of the Egyptian pyramids. And um, what is striking here is the fact that how big this uh, pyramid was in the very beginning. When it was first built, it was 481 feet high, and it stayed that way for 4,000 years. That was the tallest building on earth for 4,000 years. Um, it lost uh, 9.5 meters, which is approximately 30 feet, and uh, today it, uh, it now stands at 449.5 feet tall, so it lost its cap. The whole point here is to show you how big a building would be next to it. So the original size, which you can see here next to the building, would be 44.427 stories high. Let's just round it up, 44 stories high. Uh, today it would stand 41 stories high. That just goes to show you how high this building was. Uh, I call it a building because and we call it a pyramid, but uh, essentially uh, it's incredible that they had had the the understanding of putting a um, magnificent structure together uh, the way they did. Let's go to the next photo. And uh, as you can see, this is what it it looked like when it was finished. It was uh, uh, capped off with a with a white shimmering glow to it. And so you could probably see these for literally uh, maybe 60, 70 miles away. Uh, there was no buildings out there, so it's a clear view. Next photo. Just another photo. This time it shows a little, little bit of the Sphinx in there. And the next photo. Now, here's where I have uh, issues. It's the king's chamber that was built high up, 43.03 meters. Um, this right here confuses me. And the reason why it confuses me is because of what they uh, put inside the king's chamber that was so confusing. And that is that there was uh, several heavy, heavy objects that had to go up there and they were uh, made of granite, red granite. Now, in today's um, world of construction, and let's go to the next photo, um, we can lift 40 tons. The Egyptians tell us that they've lifted 80 tons up to that structure, okay? 80 tons. That's an incredible amount of weight to be lifting up. Uh, there have been different uh, um, estimates on it, but the blocks came from Aswan, 
the granite blocks and um, the the uh, the white limestone came from Tura. But here's the incredible thing: if they used a say a um, uh, uh, a ramp system, which they claim they did, uh, how did they pivot an 80-ton block? Now, just to give you a reference here, uh, the 80 ton blocks would have to be lifted 13 stories high. That's how high it would have to have been, 13 stories. And it took uh, a, a, approximately, some estimates say 20 years to build it using 100,000 laborers in three shifts. Now there's different calculations you can take on that and a lot of them don't make a lot of sense uh, because in some areas they say that you'd have to uh, lay down 315 blocks a day. Uh, we're talking about 2,300,000 limestone and granite blocks to build this structure. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand how they think we could, we could possibly believe they did that. Next photo. It um, bewilders me the fact that uh, I know that, that you know, people are proud of their, of their culture and their ancestors and, and this and that, but um, I, I don't understand it. Next photo. Just giving you a round view of these, these structures. Next photo. A little bit of a, a, a color uh, here, but there, there's, these are different, basically, photos of the structures itself. You can see some, a couple of three small ones there in the front, but next photo. This is the main one, uh, the center one, and this is the one that we're really looking at. Next photo. And I want to show you a little of the uh, insides of that and just show you how uh, intricate the, the building was itself. Next photo. Now here's another thing that, that really bothers me is even though there was no, no feral found in this pyramid, um, they want us to believe that they carved these out of um, this granite uh, sarcophagus uh, out with the chisels, okay, and we're talking about copper chisels. Copper chisels cannot um, make a dent in granite. They sure can't bore holes in granite. But they claim that they um, used the method where you can actually um, use um, sand abrasion to make uh, the drilling process uh, more rigorous. Uh, I don't see that. And I, during my time growing up, I took a lot of shop classes, and I do know that they didn't have power tools. But for them to say that they, they could lift 80 tons, 13 stories, drag it up there on a ramp using 100,000 men, how are you going to maneuver 100,000 men? You can't even, you can't even get 100,000 people in a city to cooperate, much less having people drag a hundred a 80 ton block up a ramp and then pivot it. And there's not just one there, there's, there's six. And so, and, and when they got to their end point, the, block, the blocks were not, they were not uh, set uh, uh, flat. They were in an angle. And uh, I mean, we're talking about 16 feet wide uh, by 32 feet long. That is a, big block. So uh, I won't happen too much more on that. I'm, I'm, but I'm, but I, what I am saying is I, I don't see how Egyptologists uh, can continue on claiming that they built these pyramids. I, I just don't believe uh, the ancient, our ancient ancestors had that type of knowledge. It had to come from somewhere. Now, as a, a ufologist, uh, I, have to, I have to just stick to my guns. Next photo. And as you can see uh, where I'm going here, uh, this is a Bermuda Triangle. And of course, uh, a lot of ships and planes have, been, have disappeared in this area here. And uh, uh, some claim that there is a pyramid down in this area. And it, it draws uh, boats, planes. Uh, it uh, actually takes planes right out of the air. And there's been a couple of uh, scientific uh, experiments where they 
uh, claim that uh, methane comes from the bottom of the, of the sea there, and when it comes up in gigantic bubbles, it affects a plane's engine. Uh, well, they can do that on a prop plane, but I still don't understand how a jet plane would be affected by that process. But uh, that's what they claim. So again, uh, being a ufologist, I tend to fall on the uh, alien perspective here. Uh, I, I, they had to have had help. Next photo. And whether or not you believe in, um, in the alien theory, uh, we have to say that the uh, buildings in Egypt, as far as the um, pyramids are concerned, not all of them, but some of them, uh, are, is still a theory because they don't, uh, they don't have a written account. Uh, there, are, there are paintings that show uh, uh, workers dragging a large, uh, uh, I don't know if it's, it's granite or not, but it's a large rectangular block. And uh, they show 10 men dragging a possibly 20 ton block, uh, which I don't, I don't think humans were, are capable of doing that. Remember, this is ancient times. And in ancient times, the people there, they didn't have uh, really a lot of nutritious things to eat. Uh, we're talking about the desert here. Fish is about probably the most nutritious thing they, they, they had to eat as part, of, as part of their diet. And the last photo. So this is a famous uh, photo that's, that's gone around for years. And I wanted to show it uh, basically because uh, this makes more sense than people dragging blocks up ramps. And by the way, the ramps would have to be uh, the material would be just as much material used for the ramp than it would be for the pyramid. So there's a lot of uh, issues out there that have to be addressed before I'm gonna I'm gonna accept that. But um, the the uh, Egyptian um, uh, people are, are at this point in time can can declare that they they built the pyramids, um, but they have to prove that to people like me who believe that uh, they had outside help. With that, um, that concludes this first session. Please stay with us. Thank you. UFO We Want to Know is a show like no other. You'll see photos and videos from Pahrump and all over the world. You will even be able to send in your UFO evidence and questions and get them answered by your host. Tune in every Saturday at 7 p.m. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, I've got 25 photos to show you, so I'm going to be running through these pretty quick, and I, I hope you can bear with me, but there's a point to each one, each, each uh, se session of uh, groups of photos I show you, so please stay with me and see if you can get this, through this with me. Um, so let's go to the first photo. Now, people have been telling me, well, you know, uh, Joseph, he goes, that could be an airplane. This plane was taken really far up. I zoomed in to make it simple. Next photo. Darkened it up. That's clearly a jet airplane. Next photo. Just trying to give you an understanding that I can take jet airplanes uh, really high up there in the atmosphere. This plane was really, really small, but I got it a uh, uh, really tight shot with my tripod. And the next photo. And uh, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is clear. And, it, and I've taken this with a cell phone, a cell phone. So, you know, those who keep saying that, well, you can't get good pictures with a cell phone, that's clearly a, a jet airliner. Now, uh, I took another picture about the same distance, but I think this one was closer. So let's go to that one. Okay, there it is again. Uh, next photo. Look what happens. Next photo. And the last. Ladies and gentlemen, there's, there was no cross there. This had a weird shape. But, you know, if you look at that shape, that's an iconic UFO shape. There's clearly no wings. There's clearly no tail. There's, there's I mean, if you call that a fuselage, uh, that looks like a UFO to me. And I believe this one here was closer than the jet airplane. Look how big it is. I couldn't get the jet airliner that big or it would really be distorted. That was just a point because I had people uh, tell me that um, they think that the, uh, last week that those may have been airplanes in the air. So I wanted to make that 
that kind of clear. I have another one coming up in this session that's going to uh, show a distinction between uh, a bird and a UFO. But I wanted to just go through that one to, to show you the difference that I can get a jet aircraft going through the atmosphere and I can, I can get another object that is flying uh, just as high or maybe even closer and this is what comes out. So you tell me. Please write in at UFO we want to know at gmail.com Come and let me know what you think I'm capturing here. Now, this was taken in Prompt, Nevada, and it was taken just three days ago. And um, uh, they're all over the sky. When you see uh, chemtrails in the sky, take pictures. You'll be, you'll be surprised at what you get. Let's go on to the next photo. Now, last week I talked to you about, uh, I took 250 photos and videos. Out of the 250, I um, uh, deleted 249. That includes all the videos and, of course, the photos. I only kept one. And the reason why is because, because I caught this object. That is my house there. That is my property, the tree line there. And I'm facing, uh, I would say, northeast towards, uh, I would say, uh, Area 51, S4, um, in that general area. But this this craft was flying east. It wasn't flying northeast. It was flying east, which means we're talking about uh, Las Vegas, of course, but we're, uh, we could be talking about our Air Force base out there. And if that's what we're talking about, that's where this craft was going. It was, it was, heading, it was heading east. Next photo. A little bit of a close-up of it. I think we may have cut it out there on this one here. Next photo. Okay. And as you can see, it is an object in the air. Next photo. I darkened it up a little bit as I brought it in. I didn't change the background in the back, but I put a little shade on the craft itself. Next photo. A little subtle change to it. Next photo. And I'm starting to really zero in on the craft itself. Next photo. As they come in with different software, I'm starting to get a solid block. You can actually see a, a really good shape of it. It's uh, the iconic UFO, isn't it? Next photo. That's a close-up of it. Um, I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that this cannot be an airplane. It sure isn't a helicopter. It's not a bird. Uh, we had two days of, of constant rain. And um, the reason why I was able to get 250 photos and videos is because during when we had a lull in the rain, I would go outside with my tripod and I would take as many pictures as I could before the, the, the rain started up again. Because um, you don't want to get dots on your camera because if you get say a, a, a water spot on your on your lens then you all you get you can get anything on there you can get jupiter on there uh mistakenly mistakenly something that's not there because of a water spot on your on your camera so i always make sure that it's clean and clear and uh this object was out there so again write in at ufo we want to know and tell me what you think this is Next photo. Now here's an interesting little uh, story that, that I can tell you pretty quick here. I was outside with some friends and we were looking up. I have two little 10 pound dogs. And when I see hawks in the air uh, flying around my property, uh, I'm a little concerned to, to make sure that they're, they're safe and I'll, and I'll put them in their cage. And uh, we, we weren't really sure if this was a blackbird or a hawk. So I just took my phone and I took a picture of it. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but look in the upper left corner up there. There's a little dot up there. And that's not a bird. Far from it. So let's go on to the next photo. Close up of it turned out to be a blackbird. Now, there was quite a few of them out there, but they were spread all over the area. Next photo. 
I started to zero in and you can start seeing it, some, some color to it. But take a look at this picture. It's, it's not distorting in any way. You can still see the head, you can see the tail, of course you can see the wings. Next photo. And using software, uh, even though it kept its shape in every, in, in every sense of the word, uh, you know, you get detail. And of course, that's not what the bird looks like. We're talking about a blackbird, a crow, whatever you want to call it. And it, ke it kept its shape in every way. There's no blurriness here. Um, you know, I can't, you know, nobody's going to look at it and say, well, that could be uh, this or that. It's a bird. And uh, we, we were watching them fly around. So now that you see that when I take these pictures of a bird, and this bird was really far up there, I didn't know um, crows could fly that high. Uh, but they were really, really high up there. And that's why I wasn't sure if it was a, a hawk or a blackbird. So after taking those photos, I wanted to zero in on the little dot that I was talking about up in the, up in the left corner there. So let's go to that one. And that's what was up there in the same picture as it took. Now, now remember, I was looking for the bird, nothing else. This just happened to be going over. Now this craft was flying from west to east. Again, west to east. And, um, uh, you know, this is generally where I do catch a lot of craft because this was facing south uh, when I took it. Next photo. Uh, what I did was I, I kind of, uh, uh, cleaned up the background because when you zero in a lot, sometimes you can get distortion on the on the uh, the background. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I'm going to get a clean uh, silhouette. And I didn't I didn't have I had no idea what I was going to get on this picture. Next photo. Okay, you're starting to see some some colorization around the craft. Now remember, I said it was going from. Uh, from uh, west to east, and if you look at the the uh, left side of it, it looks like it's um, giving off uh, electromagnetic charge, plasma. Um, it it could be anything. Uh, when I talk about these craft flying through our atmosphere, I always say that they're not touching our atmosphere, uh, but they do get they do emit some kind of plasma or a um, uh, electromagnetic charge, anti gravity. Uh, there are probably several names you can call it. Scientists are, uh, are, are not really sure themselves. Um, I'm sure that there are those in the government uh, who have worked on these reverse engineered craft uh, that they've gotten a uh, hold of. I'm sure they know exactly what this discharge is uh, because a lot of these scientists that have come out and said uh, working on these craft that uh, it's like a uh, electrical charge when they're firing up and your hairs can stand up on end. Um, in other words, it's getting off a charge, electrical charge. So uh, these craft, whether they, there's, they do it when they first start up and start to, to move within the atmosphere, they're giving off an electrical charge all the time. And I believe that's why when you see a lot of photos of UFOs, I believe the reason why they're always blurry, and you always hear people complaining, well, why are they always blurry? Well, if you've got electrical charge of, um, discharging from the craft, you're not gonna get a sharp and crisp picture. You, you know, I don't care if you have um, uh, high definition cameras, you're still gonna pick up the distortion. Next photo. So if you look at the, the craft here, it stayed. It kept its shape from the from the very beginning, even from the, from the very first shot that was in the upper left corner. This is what it looked like, and I know because I took my times twenty this time, and I looked at it, and th it didn't change. I just zeroed in, zeroed in, and uh, you know, you you can see this got three different layers. You got the solid dark in the center, which is called mass, according to our scientists. Then you got the blue coming out of it, which I believe is cold air, and then you got that electromagnetic charge or plasma. Next photo. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, has to be a, what I'm, in my conclusion, what I'm saying is this has to be a UFO. It could be nothing, nothing less. It, this is a UFO. Uh, if you have any questions, please write in. Let me know what you think it is at uh, UFO we want to know at gmail.com uh, because a lot of people out there 
uh, they, they write to me and they tell me, uh, you know, you're, you're catching a lot of UFOs, but yet uh, on the NASA website, they, they're, they're continuously saying there's still not enough data. Um, I just hope that they stop saying that because it's getting really old, and it's getting old for me to keep repeating it. We'll be, we'll be back after this message. UFO We Want to Know is a show like no other. You'll see photos and videos from Pahrump and all over the world. You will even be able to send in your UFO evidence and questions and get them answered by your host. Tune in every Saturday at 7 p.m. Thank you for staying with us. I have uh, two videos and 10 photos to show you for this session. Um, I apologize if, I'm, if my words sometimes I skip. Uh, it's a little bit cold for me in here, but... Um, uh, I want to make sure that I, 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 I repeat myself if I get it wrong. So let's go to the first video here. And what you're seeing is a UFO flying down from the top to the bottom. Uh, this craft, we had to slow the video down and we had to also bring the picture in. Uh, this uh, photo uh, excuse me, video of the sun was really, really far away. But this UFO was coming from the top down and it went all the way down to the bottom of the screen past it. But because we had to zero in, we lost some of the footage of it. But believe me, you can see this craft from the top of the arrow all the way to the bottom of the screen and past it. Uh, we also had to slow it down. I believe this craft was probably uh, flying uh, somewhere maybe Mach 20 or, or even greater. Uh, you can't judge it, of course, because I don't have a tracking system in my head, but from what I can see in all the photos and videos I've taken, I believe this craft was flying at least a minimum of Mach 20. It would just take it off. Now, it looks like it's coming down, but it's not. It's going across the sky. And uh, this uh, uh, video here well, was taken uh, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon just two days ago. Um, I'm getting them every single day. That we every day that we have sun, I can I can find UFOs flying. As soon as they hit the uh, the light aurora around the sun, uh, it illuminates these craft where they're no longer invisible to the eye. And of course, if I was standing out there looking up, uh, not looking directly into the sun, but uh, around the sun and putting say my fist or my hand over my over the sun while looking up, you wouldn't be able to see these craft. They're just moving too quick, and the human eye cannot pick up these craft. Uh, only a video recorder or a photograph can pick up these craft. Now, if you go take a, a 10 millimeter camera outside, 30, excuse me, a, a, a 35 millimeter camera outside, and you take pictures of the sun, like I do, you're gonna get UFOs. I can guarantee you because I've taken my 35 millimeter out there, and I have taken uh, good pictures of UFOs and uh, Believe it or not. They come out just just like the ones I take with my cell phone There's no difference and that's why I spend so much time with my cell phone and not my 35 millimeter or my camcorders now I am at this point in time training myself with my uh, uh, my 4k and my 5k uh, Camcorders because they have infrared and I'll be taking a lot of pictures of the Sun using uh, uh, my um, infrared and then on regular uh, uh, photos uh, and see what the dif difference is. Next photo. Okay, so that's where the we stopped it as it was coming down. And as you can see, uh, this was a UFO. Uh, you can see the trees in the bottom there, okay? Uh, and this was taken in Las Vegas, Nevada. I was there a couple of days ago. And uh, that's why you see these palm trees out there. I don't have palm trees on my property. And uh, next photo. And uh, uh, instead of a circle, I wanted to show you the shape of this UFO. And, and as you can see, uh, it's darting through the system. Um, in some of the photos that you see UFOs, you, the, the wide end is the leading edge. But on this one here, it was the small end that was leading it. And the final photo of this, what I did is instead of keep taking pictures of it, I wanted to show you um, what the end results were from this craft was. And, uh, you know, a lot of my photos, uh, I end up with craft that look just like this. Now, that does, you know, some people say, well, it looks like a, a crack eggshell. 
you know, um, the distortion you get from from uh, a whether it be a cell phone or a 35 millimeter or or whatever high resolution camera uh, HD, you're gonna you're not gonna get a perfect shape. And uh, um, if I end up utilizing my uh, 4K and 5K cameras and start using it in the second part, of, I should say the second season. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, eat my own words if I get better looking crap. Uh, right now, I'm really not sure. I'm, I'm still working with these two devices and uh, uh, I'm not a technical person. Uh, I, um, I'm going to be studying a lot more of, of the uh, uh, different cameras that I have and what's what's best for me to show these uh, images to you. OK, let's go to the next photo, uh, the video rather. And of course, we got the arrow out to show you where this UFO was out. Um, we had to do some manipulation also on this particular video. And the reason why is because um, in the very beginning of this, uh, there was a UFO that was probably going Mach 20. It flew by so quick, really close to this area here, the same area. It flew from right to left, and it was just really moving. And instead of playing with it and, and showing that over and over, I'm going to show you the slow one. And that's what you're looking at here. This is a UFO that was heading the same direction as the one that was speeding by. And I didn't want to show the one that was flying by real fast because um, it's, it's kind of irritating because you just see a white flash go right by. But um, at the um, next segment, you're going to see something uh, that is worth watching because it, 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 they were zooming by and we had to slow those down. Um, it's kind of tough when um, you get UFOs that don't want to be seen. They have a mission, and whatever that, mi that mission is, uh, we're not previous to it. But these craft are flying around. And again, as I, as I said earlier in the show, uh, once these craft get near the sun's aurora, you can, see, you can see the aurora, how much the sun is giving off light in this particular area. And when they hit that particular area, that's when they're visible. So again, as I said before, take your cameras out there. Do what I do. See what you get. And if you get something similar to it, send it to me. I'll put it on the show for you. Uh, I don't have to use your name. Um, it, you know, Not everybody wants to be known as, as uh, uh, looking and finding UFOs. But um, more than half of, of America believes in the uh, UFO um, phenomenon. And uh, more, it grows every year. It grows uh, more and more as far as the percentage-wise. And I'm really sure that the, the government uh, knows exactly what these craft are. I know there's been over 100 crash retrievals. And uh, until we get uh, disclosure, we're gonna, people like me are going to keep showing these videos until the government finally has no choice but to reveal what they know. And, and when that's going to be, uh, I can't tell you. But let's go on the first photo on this one. And that's the UFO you were looking at, plain and clear. Uh, again, we zeroed in on this uh, on this video uh, because uh, it was uh, so hard to to see it. Uh, but it wasn't that far away from the sun. Now here, this is an actual photo of it before it was brought in. That's why it it looks so good because. Uh, the original photo, uh, you, you don't have to darken anything up. Even though when I did this video, I did darken it up, the, the shade of it. Uh, and the reason why I did that is because you can see more of the UFO. If you're ever wondering, when you see a lot of my videos, the little uh, dot, it's kind of a blue dot to the right of the sun, that's a lens flare. I get those in almost every photo I get. Uh, if the sun is out there, you're going to get a lens flare, and you have to be careful. I had a couple people send me um, this lens flare and say, I got, a, I got an orb, and it was, it was uh, dancing around the sun. Well, it, that's because it was a lens flare. Now, you don't make fun of those people, uh, because if you're not a photographer like me, you can make that mistake. When I first uh, was, was doing this, and I saw the, that uh, lens flare jumping all over the place, I said, Eureka, I got me a UFO. So I, I was in the same category. But um, not to make fun of people again, OK? Next photo. This is a really close up of it. And as you can see, I really darkened the background. And I darkened the background 
for the main purpose to be, be able to see the shape of this UFO that was flying in the atmosphere. And again, I'll keep saying it, these craft are in our atmosphere. This craft was not out there in the sun, by the sun. It was in our atmosphere. Next photo. Now, there's something interesting about this UFO. You can see I've got an arrow pointing at uh, the top of the UFO. And the reason why I blackened it is because if I kept it blue in the background, it's really hard to see what was in this UFO. And this is incredible because um, I've taken, like I said, thousands of UFOs similar to this, like little white dots. But I've never caught a UFO with something inside of it like this, a solid piece inside of it. Whether it's part of the UFO, whether it's a glitch, I don't know. Next photo. Close up of it and take a look at that for yourself. That looks like a solid piece and part of the UFO. That's not a hole. It is something that's in the UFO itself. Next photo. Close up of it. Doesn't move, does it? Stays the same. That is clearly a part of the UFO. Next photo. I really zeroed in on that object and not, not the, uh, the, the white part of the UFO uh, to see if I can maybe uh, get something more clear. But this shape never changes. It never changes. From the very first time I saw it using my magnifier, I saw that little and I thought maybe um, it, it's got a, you know, uh, it's real light and you're seeing the background. Uh, um, and that's what's causing this. But take a look at it. It's got a shape to it. <clears throat> now, what it, what it is, what it could be, I have no idea. But if you've ever seen a picture uh, like this with this, uh, this shape here, <clears throat> let me know at UFO we want to know at gmail.com. I'd like to hear from you. And I believe the next uh, one is the last of the photos. <clears throat> and this gives you an idea. This shape never went away. It's real clear to me that whatever this was, it was part of that craft. So again, if you've ever seen something like this before, please write in. Let me know if you and send the picture in to me or send the video in to me, and I'll be more than happy to show it on this show right here. Uh, this show is for the taxpayer. I always I always say that this that this show is for the taxpayer because I don't like when government spends. Uh, uh, millions of dollars on things and we're not privileged to it. Uh, you know, we pay their salary. And if it wasn't for the taxpayer, the American taxpayer, um, where would this uh, country be? We made it. We, we made this country. We'll be back right after this message for the last segment. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us for the last session. Uh, I have two videos and 11 photos to show you. And uh, for, so let's get with the videos right away. Let's take a look and see what we have. What are you looking at here? Well, I went out at night. This was taken at one o'clock in the morning. And what I did was I took my laser and I took my high definition uh, flashlight out there. And what I did was I put them together. And I put the laser real far away so you didn't see, you know, uh, I used a white point on the laser and uh, in combination with the uh, flashlight, which uh, shoots 4,500 yards in the air. That's, that's pretty good distance. And uh, I see these little, what I call nighttime critters flying around. Now, some people have said that those are just, um, uh, you know, uh, not bugs, but they're just little, things that fly in the air and it, it's normal. But some of these actually have a shape to them. And I thought that was quite interesting. And so what I did was I was waiting for a really good one to come by and I just took, took a stop motion on it. So on the next one, we'll go to the first photo. And that's what I got, stop motion. Now there was some that were a lot larger than this, but uh, it was really cold. It was something like 37 degrees. 
and uh, it's kind of hard when you're out there freezing. Next photo. Close up of it. And again, these are not changing their shape either. Next photo. So what I did was I put it on my uh, computer software because I want to see if I got a different look on it because this was uh, taken with a nighttime uh, uh, shot. It wasn't infrared, but by using the, the um, laser and the uh, f a flashlight that I used, uh, and I didn't do a pulsating flashlight. It was just regular steady, a steady stream. And the last of the photo, this is what I got out of it, zooming in. This is my final analysis on it. And the reason why you're seeing this color here is I believe this is because of the laser I used on it. But um, whether or not these are flakes flying in the air, they're insects, whatever they might be, if you go outside at night and you take a flashlight, and uh, you don't have to strobe it, but do a regular flashlight in front of a camera, you can get these all the time. What they are, scientists really don't know what they are. They assume that there's just flakes that are flying around in our atmosphere. If they're flying around, I would think there's some kind of biologics. Uh, whether or not that's true or not, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing like the scientists. I thought that was interesting. Next video. Okay, now here's a really, really great video here. And we had to really do a lot to manipulate this uh, video so you can see it. In the very beginning, you get a UFO flying through the atmosphere. It's coming from, you can see it there, coming from right to left. And uh, that was the second one. We're gonna loop this uh, quite a few times. We didn't put no arrows because you can see when the sun starts to move a little bit, that's the beginning of the uh, video. But you can see in the first few seconds, uh, that one fl comes flying down. And then at the end of the video, you have a second one flying down. Now on the second UFO, there's actually two separate UFOs coming down. And that's what makes this uh, video so interesting is because you didn't have one, you had three of them and they were clear as day. Uh, you can see it flying through there. Uh, it was probably going Mach 20 because this was a very large and close up UFO. This wasn't very far away from me. It seemed like it was really close. And uh, I darkened the whole sky. This was taken during the day. This was taken at 1235 in the afternoon. And uh, I, I darkened it because these craft could better be seen if you darken it. So after this loop here, let's go ahead and go to the first photo. And this is the, the first one that you saw flying by. It was a, a solid UFO, and uh, it seemed to just uh, have no aerodynamics to it, the way it was flying. Look, you know, if you, if you look at it, it was, it was going from upper right to left, uh, coming down. It didn't seem to have any... Uh, 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 like a co cockpit would have. And again, we can't think of human turns uh, because, uh, like I've said in, in past videos, I believe they can fly a box in our atmosphere. Next photo. Close above it. And as you can see, there's some discolorment around it. Now, the light, of course, is the density, and the darkness around it is the cold air. That's according to our scientists. Next photo. Another close-up of it. Now, uh, here, here's the, the part that might be a little confusing. Uh, when I said the light is the density, um, it could be reversed. Uh, that dark spot could be the uh, UFO itself, and the white part could be the electromagnetic charge that's coming out of it. Uh, the only difference is, and the reason why I said that in the beginning, that, uh, that the white was the uh, density is because when I was watching this uh, video over and over and over, and believe me, I spent hours on this video, um, I usually see a flash, uh, and that's the white part, but this did not give off a flash. It was glowing the whole time that I was looking at it, and the last of it. So you can make up your mind for yourselves whether the dark part is the UFO or is it the light part. Now, if you look at the very bottom, the dark part, it looks like an inverted UFO uh, upside down, doesn't it? You can make all kinds of, uh, uh, of uh, possibilities uh, from these UFOs. They, they, they're just mind-boggling.
Let's go to the next photo. And this is the second one. This was the second one. And uh, what I did with it was when I stopped motion it, I waited so uh, you can actually see uh, the, the larger one and then you saw a white dot and it was traveling with this UFO. They were traveling together. Uh, they never wavered. I took stop uh, motion uh, shots in the very beginning when it was all the way to the right of the sun. And when it was first starting off, they were they were just like the, the one in the uh, on this one here you're seeing. Next photo. Close up of it. You can see what I'm talking about here. It looks like a, a, a bowling pin that got hit on the head with this, with a ball. It looks like it broke the head. Uh, but uh, this is a UFO flying through our atmosphere. And uh, there's, there's no other way to say it. Now, on the last and final photo of this, I want him, I want my director to keep that up there because I want to talk a little bit about this UFO and the, the discolorment I got from it. Uh, what I did was I uh, went over and over my, with my software on it and I looked at it and said, well, there's, there's got to be, there's got to be something to it because if you look at the round UFO and you look at the head of that, what I called a bowling pin, there, they have the same ratio of color. And then you've got the really dark white on the bottom of it. Um, could it be giving, giving off an electro uh, electromagnetic charge? Uh, something was happening there. What it was, uh, I have no idea. But uh, I thought that was quite interesting. I've never caught a, a, a video of UFOs uh, flying like this, one after the other. And it's too bad I didn't continue on videotaping because I would have caught... Um, say uh, more of these because uh, they were very similar in shape and going through this in the, in the same direction. I thought that was kind of uh, odd. What do you think about this particular video here? Uh, write in at UFO we want to know at gmail.com. Please let me know what you think it is. And I, I pre appreciate uh, people like Meredith in Las Vegas, Richard in Los Angeles, and, and Brandon in uh, Alaska. Uh, these three people uh, constantly write me, and, and I do appreciate their comments. Uh, there's, there's really nothing negative, but they give me their perspective, and I appreciate it. I really do. If there's anybody else, else out there who wants to uh, write me, I write back. I write back to you, and I let you know uh, my opinion. And uh, I don't take anything as an insult um, unless uh, there's uh, what I call the laughing boys out there who make jokes of this phenomenon. I don't believe it's a joke. Okay, let's go on with the uh, next one here. And I want to <clears throat> give you an understanding uh, about what I do with my, my uh, off time when I'm not look behind my desk looking at my computers and, and my photos and all that. Uh, I spend a lot of time going to some of these festivals, these craft festivals uh, at Tiffoli in this, this particular one. Um, uh, this is going to be Sunday in Summerlin uh, at Tiffoli, as I said, Village. Uh, across from the Sun Coast, uh, I will be joining the Tumblr Lady uh, at this craft festival from 10 to 4. Uh, so please come out and hang out with me for a while. I'll be there all day. Um, the Tumblr Lady has developed a line of uh, glowing um, tumblers for me. Um, we have also uh, Bluetooth speaker tumblers exclusively for the UFO We Want to Know show. Uh, there's going to be over 80 vendors and eight food trucks there. Uh, uh, I've been there several times. The food trucks, it's a variety. You, you, have, uh, you have a taco trucks there. You have Indian food. Uh, there's uh, all kinds of uh, cheeseburgers, whatever you want. There's also coffee shops there uh, to hang around. And um, come out and... And, and talk with me. I, I'd be I appreciate it if you would come out and and uh, let me know if you've seen the show and uh, if you're interested in buying any of the uh, uh, Bluetooth speaker uh, tumblers or the glow in the night uh, uh, or I should say glow in the dark tumblers. If you'd like to purchase any of those, um, uh, that helps my show because um, I told you in the beginning uh, I I pay. I'm the producer director. Uh, even though I have a technical director here, I, pr I uh, produce, direct, of course, take all the pictures and everything. I do everything as a one-man show. Um, I'm not, I don't ever ask for money uh, outright because I don't think that's right. 
Uh, but if you would like to come out and help uh, support my show, uh, I'd appreciate it. And of course, I have the, uh, uh, like I said, I have the tumblers. Uh, I'll have them for sale and all that. That really helps me out. I also would like to uh, mention that if you, uh, if you enjoy my, my videos, give me a, a, a like up and also uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can, if you miss any of my shows, you can go to Prump Alien Guy on YouTube, Prump Alien Guy, and all my shows are on there. And um, I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, as far as uh, uh, today's uh, information on NASA, uh, they've been putting out uh, this, the, the same information. They're finding Earth-like planets, uh, but nothing new on UFOs. And uh, I believe that the whistleblowers are having a tough time getting together because I think the government is backtracking on uh, that promise of letting them speak. Thank you for uh, watching the show, and I'll see you next week.